good evening to all the 12th grade students parents and high school counselors thank you so much for joining us for the knowledge at kpd admissions 101 workshop series session today today we have a very special institution who's joining us the new school and we have three wonderful panelists who will be very happy to present to you about uh, their, their 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 institution as well as talk about their programs and about the session topic and share more details as well overall with you as well as you may have seen in our outreach campaign which was sent to your school uh, we will be having the session topic followed by information about their institution as well and also q and a section so without further ado i'm going to be introducing the three panelists and if you could kindly wave your hands to say hello to everyone we have mr sam byron drama college of uh, performing arts we have ms lauren kushnik parson school of design and we have uh, we have uh, ms i'm so sorry we have ms tina wu uh from the uh, college of performing arts uh, from the new school and the session topic for the day is going to be tips from parsons and the college of performing arts at the new school so without further ado i'm going to be handing over the stage as well as the microphone to our wonderful panelists for the day thank you once again to all the panelists we know it's very early in the morning we truly appreciate your kind time and now i'm going to hand over the stage and the microphone to you i wish you all the best thank you Thank you so much, Kunal, for a lovely, warm welcome. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. It's really exciting to see you here, um, to get to know you today in our session, and to share a bit more about the new school here in New York City. Um, so I'm actually here in, in Queens in New York, um, and I'm joined by my panelists who are around uh, the US, but we would love to know where you're joining from as well. So if you wanna say hello and greetings from um, the city or part of the world that you're in, that would be lovely in the chat, um, just so that we can get to know that. Um, I am Lauren Kushnick. I work uh, with Parsons School of Design and I'm excited to meet with you students um, from India because I normally do visit India this time of year. Um, so it's great to, to see you in this space. Sam? Hi everyone, uh, thanks Lauren. I'm Sam, uh, I'm the Assistant Director of Admission for the College of Performing Arts. Um, I specialize in working with our uh, applicants to the BFA in Dramatic Arts program. Um, but uh, I'm looking forward to talking about all things dramatic arts, music, um, fine and visual art, uh, all that good stuff. So it's nice to not see everybody, but to uh, hopefully hear your questions and hear a little bit about what interests you. Hi everyone, my name is Tina. Uh, just like Sam, I'm also one of the mission counselors for the College of Performing Arts. So normally I will be talking with students who are applying for MANA School of Music, the classical music program, and the jazz and contemporary music. So today, uh, I'm welcoming all the questions regarding to admissions and you know, all aspects. Welcome, everyone. Awesome. Well, without further ado, we're going to dive in and share a little bit about the new school. But as we go through, please feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A. It would be lovely um, just to kind of hear what you're, you're curious about, what you're um, interested in diving deeper in. And we are setting aside half of today's conversation for those questions. So we're really ready to, to go in. Um, we would be curious just before we start to run one quick poll um, just to get a sense of what are you interested in studying. So Kunal, could you help us with that? Absolutely. And uh, to the attendees and panelists, you'll be seeing the poll on your session screens right now. Uh, uh, we'll wait for another 30 to 40 seconds for everyone to answer that. Thank you. You can choose multiple things. We understand many times students have multiple areas of interest. Um, and that's actually something that we're excited to be able to support here at the new school. Um, so if you are still exploring, if you have multiple things that you are definitely sure you want to pursue, or if you are laser focused on one, um, just let us know what your interests are. So it's about 40 seconds. Attendees, I'm going to wait for another uh, 20 seconds uh, before we get started with the show again. Thank you. Thanks for letting us pick your brain. Appreciate it. <laughs> and if we could share the results of the poll um, for Absolutely. everybody, that would be neat as well. Absolutely. Uh, would be 
be more than happy. So we have uh, we have ended the poll. I hope you can see me just for a quick second, and I'm going to share the results and go offline. Thank you. What a great mix! Oh, this is awesome. So excited to see your diverse interests today, and we are delighted to share lots of info about all of these colleges and these subjects are well supported here at the New School. Um, great, 46% art and design, so I will be chatting about Parsons. Um, we've got classical music and liberal arts neck and neck um, and drama, that's awesome. Um, so classical jazz and drama are under the College of uh, Performing Arts umbrella and liberal arts is under Eugene Lang. So we can dive into that just a little bit as well. So I'm gonna turn things over to my colleagues, um, Sam. So we're gonna dive right in. Thanks, Tina. Um, if we could go to the, the next slide. Um, so uh, just to start things off, you know, we're going to drill down into some of the specifics about all of these great things that you're all interested in. Um, but I wanted to sort of paint the bigger picture first so you can see that in context, the, the university, the new school um, itself kind of functions as this giant organism that does all of these different things and, and creates opportunities for uh, what we refer to as interdisciplinary work, the opportunity to think about what it is you're doing specifically, whether it is art and design focused, um, specifically architecture or fine and visual art, or if you are a drama student or a classical musician, um, you will have the opportunity to be part of a community that's interested in working together um, to explore new ways of uh, doing things, right? Um, we are uh, a university that was founded 100 years ago on principles of um, social justice and engaged citizenship. Um, on the belief that uh, a student, whether they're a st uh, an artist or a scholar, uh, their work should be engaging directly with the culture and society around them. Um, and we're actually uh, located right in the heart of downtown Manhattan. That's our university center you can see right there. We can go to the, the next slide. Um, but we're actually not that small. Um, you might think that, uh, how do we get this many students uh, into that small of an area? But uh, our students are spread across our three undergraduate colleges um, offering 134 different degree uh, uh, diploma programs um, from all across the United States, 116 countries. Um, so there's a lot going on. And like I said, students will have an opportunity to take advantage of all of it. Um, we have uh, been uh, a hub for engaged citizenship, um, innovation, uh, innovative thought, discussion, challenging uh, sort of scholarship for the entirety of our lives um, as a university. It, uh, you can see there in the top left corner, it's a photo of uh, what came to be known as the University in Exile, it's just one example. Um, the New School University in the 1930s and 40s uh, became a haven for um, Jewish uh, intellectuals, scholars, writers, uh, philosophers, um, scientists who were exiled from Nazi Germany um, during the Second World War. They found a home at the New School, not only to uh, be safe, uh, but to also to continue to uh, write and publish and teach and engage in their um, ideas that were deemed too dangerous for the fascist regime. Um, they found a home in New York City at the New School. So that's just one of many, many examples over the last hundred years of the way that we've uh, been a place for engaged citizenship through scholarship. Um, and that idea is now shot through all of our programs. If you want to go to the next slide. Just to give you a, a, a quick taste of the, the breadth of what we offer. Um, so what you can see here are uh, all of the degree programs uh, offered at the undergraduate level by the new school. In the far left column, you'll see uh, the degree programs offered at Eugene Lane College of Liberal Arts. In that center column uh, are the degree programs offered at Parsons, uh, the School for Art, Design, and Technology that's sort of at the heart of the new school. Um, and then, of course, the College of Performing Arts as well, which is home to our three colleges, uh, Manus uh, Classical Music Conservatory, the School for Jazz and Contemporary Music, and our School of Drama. Um, all of these degrees have varying levels of flexibility for students to combine their interests, to see how economics might speak to illustration, how dramatic art students might uh, benefit Bit from a few courses in photography or product design. Uh, the idea, again, is to really allow you to say yes as much as possible to the entire sort of multifaceted creative individual that you might be. Um, and with that, I'm going to throw it over to my colleague, uh, Tina, to talk a little bit more specifically about uh, the College of Performing Arts. Thank you, Sam. If there was a mic, I would 
Hold the mic right here. Um, hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Tina, just as I have introduced before. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Performing Arts Program. Uh, as 31% uh, 30, of you are interested in math and 31% of you are interested in drama. So uh, let me give you a little, little bit of a um, physical impression of where we are. Uh, we all, everybody, either you're studying dramatic arts, where you're studying jazz contemporary music, where you're a classical musician, everybody will be studying courses in this building called Art Hold Hall. Um, this building's about like eight, nine story high. Um, so all of us are going to maybe sharing the same classroom, studying the similar classes, and we have a really cool curriculum that we this year just created called Copa Core Curriculum. Uh, basically what that means, you'll be taking about two courses for imp improvisation and collaboration. Uh, you will be learning the whole uh, human artist and social engaged artistry and uh, technology and experimentation. So let's dive into a little bit about the conservatory as itself. Let's go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so in the whole College of Performing Arts, our faculties are current working people. So what that means, if you're a jazz faculty, you could be studying with Reggie Workman, who is a world-renowned uh, bassist, and then maybe you'll be watching him uh, gigging at Blue Notes. So our faculty includes many of the educators in the world that are Grammy winners and Pulitzer Prize winners. Um, together, their, their goal is to help the students have a very constructive constructive relationship and be very adaptable as you know how the world is changing so rapidly. Um, and also what's really cool as Lauren and Sam was talking about that we are super into collaboration with the colleagues, not just within the College of Performing Arts, also with the whole university. Uh, I know a girl who's a piano major, classical music, and man school of music. I don't know if some of you may be cla a classical pian pianist as well. So she then uh, started studying uh, fashion design at Parsons School of Design uh, as a minor. And then I think 2019 New York Fashion Week, she was performing piano on the stage, uh, even though she's not a major in fashion, but she collaborated these two major within one. And so she shined, like she was like a superstar on the stage. Um, and now let's, since we sp spoke a little bit about Manus, let's go to Manus. So Manus, yeah, so Mano was created by uh, the creator from New York, New York, New York, I can't talk this morning, New York Philharmonic uh, creators, David and Clara Manus in 1916. Uh, Manus is a, a kind of a smaller a selective conservatory. We have roughly about 500 students. Um, Mano students will be performing at New York venues such as City Center, Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall, and Mano is proudly maintaining a long-standing tradition of providing access to free and affordable performances for the world, uh, including John Zorn's groundbreaking experimental music venue, The Stone, um, and also in the Glass Box, which is a venue within our college performing art building called Art Hold Hall. Let's dive in just a little bit about jazz. Uh, because we have few people sounds like interested in the jazz program. So jazz program is very cool. Uh, faculties are, like I said, uh, in the middle is uh, our famous artist and faculty, Reggie Workman. He's the basis um, that currently teach at university. It's an artist and mentor approach. So what that means, uh, they will be maybe a guitarist, maybe pianist, and they're working, learning the newest and the most updated uh, knowledge in the art realm, either in performing arts, uh, or visual arts, or liberal arts. So um, besides Reggie Workman, another person I could think of maybe, uh, you may know Linda O oh or Jane Arrow Bloom, those are wonderful faculty, so good friends with the students too. And another thing I want to mention about the jazz program is once you get to a certain level, we call that the 3000 uh, lesson level, we can dive into the detail later if you have questions, but you can study with whoever you want in the city within the whole tri-state area, as long as that person is reachable, right? And then the school will negotiate the nitty gritty stuff for you. So your the world is your oyster. So um, this is just a little brief introduction about the JASP program. Um, now I would like to invite Sam to talk a little bit about the drama program. 
Thanks, Tina. Um, okay, so uh, the third uh, school that makes up the College of Performing Arts is the School of Drama, and we offer a single degree at the School for Drama, but that degree does many different things. Um, it's a BFA in Dramatic Arts. Um, that is our four-year professional theater training program um, that uh, is uh, a little bit different than your typical uh, theater BFA, especially in New York City. Um, it's interdisciplinary and studio-based as opposed to conservatory style. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, basically, Students in the BFA in Dramatic Arts will take foundation courses in all four of our creative disciplines. That's um, acting, directing, playwriting, and something called creative technology, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Um, but those four uh, disciplines in your first year or so, along with courses in analysis, aesthetics, um, and theater history, are designed to get everyone sort of speaking the same collaborative language and sort of building relationships. And then students will have supreme elective structure flexibility in the program to curate their theater training to speak directly to the kind of art they want to make as a dramatic storyteller. So um, many of our students will come in saying, I'm an actor, right? I'm 100% an actor. But after that first year, they realize that maybe they're 10% playwright as well. Um, and the program allows them to slowly dial that knob up um, over the course of those four years. You also have the flexibility to um, uh, explore outside the school for drama um, whether you want to minor in classical music composition or take some private lessons at the School for Jazz. Um, we have musical theater coursework that's uh, growing more and more robust every day. Um, but you can also take courses at Eugene Lang and at Parsons as well. Um, Lauren, if you want to go to the next slide really quick. And before I get too far away from it, I mentioned Creative Technologies, which is our um, fourth concentration in the VFA Dramatic Arts. It is not technical theater, so your traditional costume design, lighting design, scenic design. Um, creative Technologies is actually kind of at the heart of what the new school is, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, it is uh, taking uh, current media and technology, such as um, uh, Final Cut, uh, you know, film editing, um, sound editing, Photoshop, projection design, animation, um, concepts of coding, um, and graphic design and visual art, and finding ways to use them as uh, modes of dramatic storytelling. Um, and so students will, uh, at the very least, be actors who have the media literacy to edit their own professional film reels. Um, but at the uh, largest extent, we have students who are designing virtual reality studio spaces for uh, students to interact and scene work, um, live animation and motion capture and things like that. So that's the most open-ended of the four disciplines. But it's certainly, uh, you know, something that will be useful to all 21st century artists coming through this program. Uh, if you want to go to the next slide really quick. Um, great. So uh, that's the School for Drama. But I think Tina really alluded to this is the, the sort of packed space of Arnold Hall, um, where all of our students are studying. Uh, you know, the, the idea of the College of Performing Arts is not only to give you that siloed, intensive professional training that you need to succeed as a professional classical pianist or composer, um, or as an actor or a director or a writer, um, but also to, to really experiment with what it means to build community across performing arts uh, practices. Um, and one way that we do that is through the COPA core. Um, you'll see something uh, similar to this when Lauren speaks about Parsons first year, but uh, at the College of Performing Arts, there is a small suite of courses that all students take in their first year. And then when I say all students, I mean across Manus and Jazz and Drama. Uh, and these are core competencies in uh, collaborative practice um, and uh, citizenship and engagement and other core philosophies of the school, of the university, of the College of Performing Arts. The idea being that we build relationship between our pianists and our actors, between our saxophone players and our drummers and our, uh, you know, projection designers to really uh, have those relationships and that shared language so that they can start figuring out how they can work together to make something new, right? Um, how can everybody's uh, learning and developing practices really speak to each other to make something entirely, entirely new that's never existed before. If you want to go to the next slide. Oh, we're on to Parsons. Yeah, so uh, any, anyway, we'll, we'll speak more specifically about the College of Performing Arts as questions come up, but um, I think that shared uh, practice is really the thing to take away from it, the, this idea of innovation and citizenship as part of um, traditional arts training. But I'll throw it to Lauren, we'll talk about Parsons. Thanks, Sam. 
Um, so as, a, as you're getting the picture about the new school, um, we're really focused on this interdisciplinary study here in each of the colleges that we'll be sharing more about today. Um, we're really also quite excited to have Parsons School of Design at the heart of our university um, because I think this design sensibility, this desire to really think about how can we improve the world around us um, using the tools that we have as artists, as performing artists, and as deep thinkers um, to really change things for the better and constantly question the status quo. I think that is really at the core of what a lot of our students um, are drawn to in our community here at the new school. At Parsons, um, we do offer these majors listed on the right. Um, the majority of these majors are meant to have you live and breathe in the studio space. Um, we are really excited to introduce students to new ways of working and making. The first year is all about getting you out of your comfort zone, getting you to think about project based making. So you'll learn from your peers and from your faculty along the way um, in new areas and explore new design um, ideas that maybe you haven't been introduced to yet. We do have one uh, business program as well, strategic design and management, which takes the benefit of design thinking and applies it in an innovative way to the business world. So um, happy to dive into each of these majors in much more depth after um, we're, we're done, but I just want to give you a, a big picture view of the various paths that students take. But that shared first year is so important for students at Parsons, um, regardless of if you're in the studio with photography, architecture, product design, interior design, whatever major you elect in the BFA space, you'll be learning with your peers in totally different spaces. Um, we've designed this program to be um, a real space for, you know, creative exchange um, for thinking about elements of design as much as how your work can really make a difference. Um, so through a combination of liberal arts classes, seminar classes, um, sustainable systems, the core value that we share about design is that we should be making a positive impact in the world. So sustainability is certainly a narrative thread that will run throughout your four years of study at Parsons, as well as understanding the history of art uh, through objects as history. Um, these are classes that are more liberal arts based, but will of course have you making and working in the studio as well through your other courses. The BBA students have a lot of similarities. Um, so you'll also be in the same spaces with the same classes with a couple changes um, through quantitative reasoning and political economies because we certainly do want you to start to dive in as thoughtful um, you know, examiners of statistics and the economy in regards to business and best practices there. I will focus primarily today on Parsons here in New York City, but we have a second campus at Parsons Paris and many students through their four years of study are excited to do a study abroad experience. Parsons Paris is a great option for students thinking about fashion design, fashion business, or perhaps if you're thinking about merging art, media, and technology. Um, those three disciplines come together in a unique major that's only available in Paris. It's a really lovely campus right in the center of Paris is first arrondissement and um, has a lovely ability to kind of open your eyes to a totally different culture, um, offer another parallel uh, city urban experience, um, but really a neat supplement to your time at the new school. Um, these are the majors I mentioned um, available at Paris, um, but uh, we of course can dive in more detail to um, these three and the others that I mentioned available only in New York City. So very excited to um, talk more in just a minute about um, art and design at the new school. Um, over to you, uh, Tina. Sorry, Sam. <laughs> Hi there. Um, yeah, of course. So uh, I actually uh, I'm glad that this coincides with a really great question that just popped up in the Q&A section about double majoring, um, specifically uh, in drama and uh, contemporary dance uh, with regard to um, the ever evolving uh, amazing medium of Bollywood filmmaking. Um, 
so uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad to be talking about this. So um, what you see in front of you are uh, two of our uh, really great sort of opportunities for students to maximize how they combine their interests at the new school. Um, the BA BFA pathway or BAFA you'll hear us refer to, um, or the bachelor's master's pathways that we offer. Um, the BA BFA pathways um, are offered to students in all BFA programs at Parsons and the BFA program at uh, uh, the School for Jazz and Contemporary Music. Um, the bachelor's master's pathways are available to students in bachelor's degrees at Eugene Lang and uh, students at the College of Performing Arts. I'll talk a little bit more about what all of that looks like. Uh, the idea is both are five year uh, propositions. It'll take five years to complete both degrees, but in the BA, BFA, BAFA pathway, you'll get a, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a BFA in any of the degrees at Parsons or the BFA in, school, in jazz and contemporary music and any of the undergraduate degrees at Eugene Lang. Um, so you'll be able to combine economics and, and saxophone performance or um, combine photography with environmental studies. Um, we have students who are studying fashion design and environmental studies to uh, really uh, get a deep dive on sustainability and fashion, right? Things like that. So there's a lot of different ways that students can maximize um, and the bachelor's master's pathways uh, at Lang are uh, five year pathways that you apply uh, directly to in your junior year as undergraduates. Um, you do a blended senior year of uh, undergraduate and graduate coursework and then a fifth year of graduate coursework and you can graduate with any bachelor's degree at Lang and um, an array of over 50 master's degrees that we offer through our new school of, so of social research. These are in things like um, uh, psychology, international relations, uh, uh, economics and more. Um, specifically for the performing arts, we offer a bachelor's master's, master's pathway for our bachelor's of music or BFA programs in dramatic arts and jazz um, with our innovative master's of arts in arts management and entrepreneurship. This degree is a, um, a 18 month master's degree that is designed for working performative artists uh, in concepts of entrepreneurship, organizational management, and just, uh, you know, sort of really uh, giving you a deep dive on, on structures uh, so that you can really um, give yourself your own opportunities within the industry rather than simply availing yourself of, of what's available there. Um, I should uh, also mention that the BA BFA pathway at Parsons and Jazz, you have to apply directly to uh, on your common application. Um, we can go to the next slide. And just specifically to uh, the question about uh, dance and drama, um, you may have noticed that, uh, for example, the BFA Dramatic Arts does not uh, partake in the BFA BA pathway. Um, that's okay. Um, you can still minor in contemporary dance as a BFA dramatic arts student. Um, all of our degrees, BFA or not, offer the opportunity to minor or in some cases double minor if that's what a student wants to do. Um, and the dramatic arts is uniquely suited uh, to something like um, dance practice as part of uh, dramatic storytelling. Um, we have movement and dance courses as part of the BFA and dramatic arts, as well as our incredible contemporary dance program at Lang uh, that you can take part in as well. So you could minor in dance and uh, do a BFA and dramatic arts. If you wanted to double major, uh, Lang also offers a theater program. Um, it's a BA, so you have a little bit more flexibility to double major in dance and uh, theater. Um, that theater program is much more of a liberal arts program, so I'm happy to answer questions about that, but it is a little bit more um, academic focused, theory focused, and things like that. Uh, but we do offer a wide array of minors across all three of our undergraduate colleges, and um, there is no limit uh, to uh, what different programs can combine with other minors uh, across Lang, across COPA, across Parsons. All right, so um, I think we're gonna initiate a poll here, if that's possible. Um, well, actually, we can ask in the chat. Um, that's oh, easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly. Um, we were just curious if any of you may have taken um, a virtual visit on down to the new school. Um, so if you wanna say in the chat, if you have, um, that would be neat. Um, the new school, offers a really wonderful uh, virtual tour where you can walk not only through our facilities, the University Center pictured here on the right, um, but you also can meander down Fifth Avenue or 13th Street um, and really just get a sense of what it's like to navigate and explore New York City 
um, right around our campus. We are an urban campus, um, so it's definitely um, on the street. Not a lot of, uh, you know, playing with, uh, you know, kites or <laughs> throwing the Frisbee on Fifth Avenue. Wouldn't really recommend that. Um, but it is a really bustling and lively space um, to, to be in. Um, Awesome. You can visit, cool. um, the, that URL is the, is the virtual visit. So I encourage all of you to take a screenshot or copy it into your browser at some point and take advantage of it if you haven't done so already. Yeah, we'll put the link in the chat in just a second. Um, on that tour, you can definitely get a sense of some of the key spaces that um, we're excited to welcome students back into. Um, at the moment, the university is exclusively online. Um, in light of the pandemic, we are really concerned about everyone's health and safety first and foremost. But um, when things reopen, which we're hoping will be in spring, um, we're excited to bring students back to some key spaces where fabrication and making will take place. Um, so this is one of those spaces, the Making Center. It has a lot of different tools and facilities that support exploring new ways of working with wood from metal to uh, three-dimensional printing. We have students who are really uh, well knowledge, well versed in um, creating textiles um, or looking to explore electronic textile machines. Um, some really cool different tools that you can take advantage of, regardless of what your major is. So as long as you're trained on the equipment, which we do for each new set of students joining us, um, you're welcome to use these as part of your coursework or as part of your side projects that you're working at um, as creative individuals at the new school. Um, so that's another neat thing about our facilities is that they're open to all students, regardless of what your major might be. I also have quite a lot of exhibition space on campus. Um, these are different facilities that share working artists, um, you know, latest exhibits, share our faculty members, um, latest projects. We invite visiting artists to come and have residencies. And at the end of the year and at key moments throughout the year, we highlight our students and alumni as well. So we really want this to be a community space as much as it is a, a source of inspiration um, and a home for new artists. So lots of different exhibits are featured on campus throughout our um, several exhibition spaces. And Sam, do you want to share a little bit more about this amazing performance space? I do. What you are looking at there is the Tishman Auditorium uh, at the heart of our university center. Um, I'm answering a question about online learning. Uh, yeah, so um, this is a uh, 3,000 seat uh, orchestra hall that's very flexible. Um, what you'll see in this space often are, as you can see there, um, performances by our music students, um, but also uh, we will screen films um, and uh, TV shows. We'll, we'll host panels um, and discussions with visiting scholars and artists, large scale events. Um, but this performance space is actually only one of um, over uh, 15 different performance spaces that are um, arrayed across campus. Um, there's another large scale auditorium in the Eugene Lang building, uh, as well as several um, presentation studios at Arnold Hall, um, including a flexible black box drama space uh, at Bank Street, uh, which is another satellite drama building that's a 99 seat off Broadway style black box theater, which is our main stage, um, and several uh, recital halls, uh, uh, chamber studios and our glass box theater, which uh, is at street level and is home to uh, professional uh, jazz and uh, sort of uh, uh, experimental music venue called The Stone, which students can interact with as well. So there's a lot of performances going on. I believe last year COPA College of Performing Arts uh, curated over 700 performances uh, in one way or another in a single academic year. And so there's no shortage of people performing for you, you performing for people, um, and some strange combination of the two. Oh my gosh, Sam, that is incredible. Over 700 different events. Um, we, we are doing many events this year online and many of them did pivot online as well. Um, so if you're curious to experience some of these fantastic um, public programs, you're more than welcome to check that out too. Um, so we can put that um, link in the chat shortly too. I'm so, dropping a link to the uh, COPA uh, remote site there. 
Perfect. Very simple, cooperremote.com. Thanks, Sam. So now that you've gotten a real big picture view of um, all the different options here at the new school, we're very curious to know um, which college really speaks uh, deeply to you. So we're going to launch another poll. Thanks, Kunal. Um, and uh, just get a sense of where you might want us to dive in a little bit more deeply. Okay, I'm ready to start the second poll. Attendees, uh, please vote. Uh, I'll be starting the poll in three, two, and one, and you will now be seeing it on your screen. I hope this is visible. Thank you. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, again, you can choose, of course, multiple interests, but um, we have several questions that have come in already. Um, we're happy to take additional questions as they come in. Um, but this will just help us to get started and pull up some key information about our colleges in this next segment. Um, I often meet with students on the road and uh, many times uh, folks are curious about Parsons um, in regards to the visuals, the portfolio have lots of questions about that. Um, so we do have examples that might come in handy. Um, we also have quite a lot of information about um, jazz, manis, drama, and as I alluded to at the start, happy to talk more about Eugene Lang College as well. Absolutely, and uh, attendees, um, it's now about a minute, so I'm gonna end it. Uh, hope everyone can see the results. Uh, just give me one moment. Um, Lauren, are you able to see the results? Yes, this is great. So it looks like drama. Look at that drama interest. Love that. <laughs> Love it. Um, cool. So it looks like we might want to start with drama, Sam, um, just to dive into that a little bit more deeply. Um, and then we can talk about Parsons next. Um, Eugene Lang, sure, happy to dive into that. And then neck and neck, Jazz and Manis, love it. Um, thank you all for sharing your interests. Um, so yeah, Sam, um, I saw that you had Lauren, been- do you wanna, Yeah, uh, did you wanna go to the Common App slide? Just so uh, we can start there, and because that'll apply to everybody, and then we can speak a little bit about drama auditions. Um, you know, Tina will jump in about music auditions and all that. I wonder if uh, if everyone had known that this was a contest for who gets talked about first, if that would have changed their answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so uh, uh, I wanna talk about the, uh, the drama application process, um, which I think is one of the more sort of human-centered, uh, holistic, uh, evaluative process, uh, processes in the world uh, for uh, dramatic artists at the undergraduate level. We're really proud of it. Um, but uh, everything at the new school, whether it's Parsons, uh, Manus, Jazz, Drama, Lang, starts with the Common Application. Um, www.commonapp.org. Um, we'll drop that in the chat. If you're not familiar with the Common Application, you may be very soon if you're interested in uh, really studying in, in America. Many of our, our institutions here um, use the Common Application. It's a generic undergraduate uh, college application. There you will submit um, quite a bit of uh, personal information. Uh, there's a required essay uh, that asks the question, why the new school? That's an opportunity for you to speak about any aspect of the new school, whether it's a specific program or maybe it's about New York City, um, maybe something about our ethos uh, in, um, in social justice or civic engagement or sustainability. Whatever is uh, drawing you to us, we invite you to be candid um, about that interest and really speak to us about how we're part of your story. Um, all students are uh, required to submit two letters of recommendation, one from a teacher, one from uh, a counselor. Uh, the, that distinction is not necessarily a requirement, that's a, a suggestion, uh, but the two letters are required. Um, we are test optional for the uh, SAT or ACT if they're offered um, to all of you. Uh, we are truly test optional. We, we may even be going test blind. Um, so uh, if you feel that you've taken the SAT, for example, and you feel that score is reflective of something important you'd like us to know about your work as a student, great. If not, don't worry about it. Keep it to yourself. Now, um, 
uh, Parsons students will submit a portfolio. We're going to talk about that shortly. Lauren is going to tell you everything you need to know. Um, but for the music schools and for drama, you will audition. But you may not expect this, but the school for drama also requires a portfolio. Um, I should also mention there's a, there's actually an additional essay requirement as well, but um, I can answer questions about that if people have them. So uh, the um, dramatic arts artist portfolio, what goes into that? Um, the portfolio is divided into the different interests or the different uh, concentration areas that we offer. So there's an acting portfolio, there's a writing portfolio, directing, creative technology. There's also a portfolio for something called dramaturgy, which is basically the uh, scholarly study of dramatic uh, writing and structure. Um, so if you have academic papers about theater that you'd like to submit, you can do that as well. Each uh, type of portfolio has specific requirements. For example, the acting portfolio requires a uh, video of you performing a one to two minute contemporary theatrical monologue. Um, the playwriting portfolio requires uh, two 10 minute plays or a one act play and then an additional piece of writing that's non dramatic, you know, things like that. But the idea is that you would submit a complete portfolio type, but you are welcome to submit more than that. You are welcome to submit pieces of different portfolio types that might speak to your creativity. Um, so maybe you're an actor, but you also write poetry, or maybe you are really interested in applying as a director, but you also uh, act and you're really, uh, you feel that. Um, you know, performing and being an actor is a part of your creativity, despite being focused on directing. We want to see that. We want to give you that opportunity um, to display that, that level of creativity. You'll submit the artist portfolio along with your common application. Um, that artist portfolio will be available through our online submission hub. Um, you will be able to find that link on our website starting in about September. Um, but we encourage you to start prepping those materials now if, if that's what you're interested in. Um, and I'm also happy to take any specific questions about like uh, things that you might be wondering if they go into a portfolio we'll have time to talk about all of that but for now I want to throw it to Tina to talk a little bit about how music auditions work yes I'm just about to drop down the uh, link about for the drama application how to apply page since we have so many people interested in drama so now it's in the chat box um, so something unique about the music program, if you're talking about uh, jazz or Manus, um, I can start saying, uh, let's talk about Manus first. So for Manus, we do have a pre-screen process and that's just for the three majors, uh, their composition, uh, piano and voice. So um, we have a detailed, all the repertoires that you need to prepare for, for the pre-screen, which is this, it's a similar process as what Sam just talked about for drama, where you upload your videos, uh, you're performing on an online platform. And so when that's done, um, everything is due, I should say everything is due for Manus a little bit earlier than the rest of the university, just because we do have a pre-screen process, and that's December 1st of this year. Um, and then once that's done, and then you will be invited for a, uh, a second round of auditions also will be digitally for this particular year. And then in addition to that, say if you play the flute or play tuba or any orchestral instruments were a theory, uh, if that's your major, then you will be invited to play eight to 10 minutes interview with one of us and one of our deans and our faculty departmental chair. And so that's a process for us. It's a unique, new, awesome process. We'll get to actually learn who you are besides your musicality. Um, so that's something we are very, very excited about. Uh, it will start from whenever you submit your application to early spring next year. Uh, for jazz, there's no pre-screen. So you will be, uh, let me see if I'm saying this right. So you'll be submitting three videos of you playing. Um, total should not be longer than 15 minutes. Um, and there, there may be a standard jazz, blues, or bossa nova, a traditional American songbook, where what we just want to see some diverse, different musical style that you can do and present for us. And if you wrote something original, that's amazing. You can submit that as well. Um, so that's something, a brief introduction about the audition process. Can I just jump in really quick and clarify um, that uh, actors will also have an audition portion in addition to their artist portfolio, but all applicants will uh, be invited to interview virtually. 
um, and actors, part of their interview will be their audition. And uh, you'll see there it says in quotes, working audition. What that means is that um, rather than a formal, uh, you know, introducing your monologue and performing it and then thank you very much, goodbye. Um, you'll be working with our acting faculty on your piece. And um, I'll stress that it's actually more important that part than necessarily what you bring in. Um, the, you know, what you've rehearsed, what you've worked on. Um, it's more important uh, to see how flexible you are to uh, sort of uh, redoing it in the room, sort of thinking about it differently, taking risks um, and, and being willing to fail in front of us, right? Because we're, we're all just trying to sort of do the work in real time. So anyway, actors will audition and interview, all applicants regardless will interview. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Sam and Tina. Um, while we were chatting, a couple clarifying questions about the essay um, in the common application. Thank you, Radhika. Um, yes, the essay is um, a really integral part of the common application. It is how you share your story, um, which is what we're here to really dive into. Uh, we want to get to know you. And part of that is to see how you speak about yourself, um, see how you reflect on what has made you, um, you know, the creative individual that you are, and see what kind of specifics um, at our university really resonate for you. What about the programs that you've investigated, um, you know, click? And how would you like to learn from us and our faculty? What might you bring to our community? So it is a really great part of the application for you to really dive into um, who you are and speak from your experience in the essay. So awesome question. Um, 600 words, a little bit of a challenge, but we're excited um, to see what you come up with. There's an optional essay um, that is a personal essay, not required for us. Um, but if you feel you would like to show a different facet um, and you have something you'd like to share, you certainly can use that space. Um, so I know there were a couple specific questions about the Parsons aspect of the application. And as Sam and Tina both mentioned, um, each of the colleges have a different supplement. So we're in the common application, you search for the new school, and then you say, I'm interested in drama, in Eugene Lang for liberal arts, or in Parsons, or in jazz, or in Manus. So you specify from there. And those special unique questions appear at that point. Um, so if you're interested in art and design at Parsons School of Design, a key part of the application will be, of course, showing your creative vision. So building a Parsons portfolio is an important step to take um, as you're looking ahead to submitting your common application. Um, Contrary to what you might think, we don't actually expect specific major focused work. We look for creative portfolios that highlight what you are most interested in, um, what your best making is, and what your best ideas are. Within 8 to 12 slides of work, we look to see how you think creatively. You can include any virtual visual medium from um, virtual, you know, explorations that maybe you've made um, using digital tools to physical, um, three-dimensional work, two-dimensional work, photography, um, all visual media is welcome. We are excited to see how you've maybe challenged yourself and done a little exploration. Um, working from home this past semester might um, have changed a little bit of that for you, but we've still been encouraged to see how creative students can be, even within the maybe restrictions of your own space. Um, so if you're, you know, not able to access oils right now or you're not able to finish that sculpture, that's okay. We'd love to see where you got. Um, if you have a, a work in progress, that certainly can go in your portfolio. Um, but we'd also love to see what you're doing in your sketchbook, how you're keeping busy at home. Are you making things using found materials in your own space? Um, so you definitely can still be experimental uh, given the restrictions that might be true for you at the moment. As well as in your portfolio, we do have a Parsons challenge that asks you to revisit an initial idea and take it in a new direction. Um, so thinking about that um, can really help you to um, challenge yourself in a new way to hone an idea, refine um, 
and you know try something new in regards to a concept. So I'm going to kind of show you what I mean um, with some examples uh, quickly that will maybe spark some ideas for you in curating your work. Um, for students looking at um, different majors, um, you know, you might see some of those majors popping up, calling out to you in the examples of the work that we look at in this moment. But again, remember, Parsons does not expect a fashion design applicant to include just fashion design. Instead, your first litmus test should be, is the work I'm sharing personal? Does this show how I see the world? And does it reflect my values as an artist and as a deep thinker? Um, within your, your portfolio, we would love to get to see how creative you are in um, imagining the world around you. This student wanted to highlight their technical skills, but they also used a really whimsical um, view of their room to imagine uh, the sea kind of coming in and warping the space. So, you know, it's more than just an example of a strong technical piece. There's a personality, there's a voice, there's a point of view coming across. So, Rather than including maybe a still life of an apple, um, we would much rather see work like this that gives us more insights into your own creative voice. Process can really help us to follow along with how you've um, thought of an idea, how you've sketched out something. Maybe you really roughly sketched out something on a napkin or in your sketchbook um, and then use digital tools to make it uh, fully realized. Uh, this student was exploring um, packaging for tea and knew they wanted it to be a really striking design um, that uh, still didn't take up too much space on shelving and um, they designed this packaging really quickly. Um, you know, their, their sketch is not, you know, as sophisticated as their final product and that is okay. Um, we know you're going to have different moments and different strengths as well. Um, but it's so helpful for us to see the flat, the three-dimensional, and the um, idea development as well. The student was thinking about um, an installation and uh, such a charming final piece on the right. Um, but they also wanted to give us a sense of that narrative a sense of the mood and the thoughts that went into um, all of the elements of design and where they were coming from with this morning tea party. So um, it can be really a fun way as well to inject personality into your portfolio. This is not required for every piece. Not every piece needs this background. Um, so use it sparingly and where you feel it would best support the work. Um, most importantly, Eight to 12 slides is a limited amount of space. So um, be creative in that area. You can absolutely have multiple works on um, a slide. So this student's slide was just the um, nine images that you're seeing on the right. So that can be your slide as well. And you can have um, a real sense of a, a series. You can show us related works in that space. Um, it helps us to see the narrative threads between the work that you've selected. Um, related to that is how you photograph your work. Um, you don't need a fancy camera, but you should uh, take note of the edges, make sure things are true, um, no distortion. The lighting is decent. If you are by a window, that really helps. Um, if you uh, make sure your shadow is not in the, the photo, that's really good too. Um, and as much as we love your pets, uh, we don't really want to see pets in the background. Um, I have seen a, an occasional cat, <laughs> uh, but no need to include that in your documentation. Instead, think about what's the best way to present your work, um, from which angle and um, how to really give us a sense of that space. So I could talk all day about this, but <laughs> I want to see if there are some other questions that have come in, perhaps specific to Parsons um, and the visuals, because I do want to kind of dive in. Um, I know there had been a question earlier about um, product design. Um, this student had 
included product design examples. This was the T example we looked at earlier, but they were applying to communication design. Um, so Shristi, I hope this gives you a sense of how diverse a portfolio can be. You can draw from any making that you have that you feel shows your best ideas, your strongest technique, you're really proud of how it came out, and ideally those things come together in each piece. Um, this student did a great job of showcasing not only um, those two elements, but we're starting to see colors that relate. We have sort of an aesthetic coming together. It feels like one student made this work. It feels like these could be on the wall together, hanging in someone's, you know, in someone's living room. So that's another way to see if what you've put together works together. Um, it can give a sense of flow um, within the portfolio. So great question um, about product design. No, there's nothing specific, um, but you know, experimentation, personality, and how you put it together is all super important. Um, so I'm going to pause there and um, turn things back over to my colleagues as well. I just want to jump on this um, this question about internships because uh, I think it highlights something about what is unique about studying at the New School, studying in New York City, and all of that. Um, and speaks to uh, sort of a few things that we do really well. So um, we've placed over 1,200 internships um, almost every year for the past uh, six or seven years. Um, and that's not just because we're like more connected than other universities or anything like that. In a lot of ways, um, the New York City is the city of the internship. Um, as a global and uh, national hub of culture and design and politics, um, there's just a lot going on in New York City, right? And so um, we have placed students in uh, internships or apprenticeships at some of the biggest design houses in the world, uh, from Diane von Furstenberg um, to uh, Alexander Wang, um, uh, to uh, you know working with uh, the United Nations during the Climate Summit a few years ago, um, to Marvel Comics and Sony Studios uh, and on down. Um, and part of the reason for that is that these things are just happening in New York City. You can literally walk to um, the Viacom offices. You can take a subway to the United Nations. Um, but also, uh, we have one of the, the highest percentages of uh, adjunct, uh, which means part-time uh, faculties um, of any uh, university in the Northeast. And uh, what the reason I highlight that is that these are uh, people who are teaching classes at Parsons, who are teaching classes at COPA, who are working thriving industry professionals in their chosen field, right? So you are going to be learning the concepts of product design from people who are leading technicians in that field. Um, and that means that they, uh, uh, they have offered our students apprenticeships, um, have given them a sort of an entree into uh, having those connections to uh, have those experiences. And so our students are really active in the New York City sort of world. Um, because that's where they are. That's sort of the, the energy of being on campus, but it's also because they are working directly with the people who have those connections. Uh, our average class size is also uh, 12 and the student to teacher ratio is about nine to one. And so you are working directly with these, these people on projects. Um, and so they really get to see your work uh, firsthand and that leads to a lot of opportunities. The other thing I will say is that being in New York City, uh, just being in Greenwich Village means that, um, you know, just because uh, the new school doesn't have an explicit connection in one way or another, either through faculty or administration with a particular institution, doesn't mean you don't have access to it, right? You have the full force of the university behind you as a student. Um, to forge your own path. If you see an institution that's doing something you're really into, um, you can sort of work with us to help shove your foot through that door um, and really get in there uh, if it's something you're interested in. And so our, our students are, are just all over the place um, doing that kind of work. Uh, and I just wanted to sort of um, drop that in there. And uh, Lauren made a really great point about taking pride in the work that you submit to us, uh, really using that as a litmus test. And, and I think that's true across the board. Um, it goes for the, the dramatic arts portfolio. I think it goes for the, the, the music auditions as well. Um, we are looking for a reason to admit you to the new school. We are not trying to filter out people who are unworthy. Um, we are interested in knowing as much about your work and your personality as we can um, to see that you fit with uh, the type of things that are happening here, right? So the more that you can 
use your own um, sort of barometer, the, the, the more that you can check your work for your own uh, uh, sense of, of you know, what you like, what you're interested in, what you feel is good, um, the better off you're going to be. Uh, we are really not, we don't have something specific in mind, even when we're talking about which, um, which box sonata you choose, um, you know, whether you do Chopin or a, another composer that I don't know the name of. Um, there are the specific requirements, but we really encourage you to take those as an opportunity to pour yourself into them. Um, and uh, I just wanted to sort of highlight that because I think Lauren said it so beautifully, but yeah. We can talk about the Parsons Challenge now, maybe? Sure. Um, I'd be happy to talk about the Parsons Challenge. And then, um, Tina, if you wanted to talk after that um, about, it uh, looks like um, Jiraj has a question about how does the scholarship work um, for international students? So we can dive into that, too. Um, sorry, I'm scrolling. That's the worst. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Parsons Challenge. Um, so within the visuals that you include in your supplement for Parsons, um, your portfolio is eight to 12 slides of work. These are works that you've curated that again, show your personality, share your story. The Parsons challenge is an additional one to three slides of work. This is a fun experiment where you get to revisit a work that you made and push it in a new direction. These one to three slides can be just the final work that you've made. You can just write about that experience in the essay, or you can share where you started and where you landed. Um, however you wanna present and use those slides, up to you. We're just asking you to make one new work though. Just wanna clarify that. The space is there for you to use to show maybe how you think, your process, but you don't need to make three works. <laughs> Just one new piece um, inspired by another piece in your portfolio. So for example, this student um, really wanted to explore um, and revisit this piece, The Birth of a Bird, um, which is on the left. And what they elected to, to show in their Parsons Challenge um, were these three separate slides. The first being this source, where they originated this uh, mixed media drawing. Um, it was really about journey, about their personal story, and they wrote a lovely essay that went with it. Um, but they wanted to totally revisit this in another, from another angle. And so they actually made a three-dimensional teapot. And um, the process image is the one on the left before it was fired. And then the final image is the one on the right. Um, so it's really great to see this example for um, a couple things. Number one, they're showing a great range of making. They went from 2D to 3D. That's um, a great example of their versatility. Uh, number two, there's a parallel here. There's some linkages between where they went in the new piece. Um, the line work really, really is echoed in the way that the coils of the pot have been um, created. So there's that nice kind of conversation between the pieces. And number three, their essay, which I don't have here, um, absolutely was a strong Parsons challenge. It really articulated why they wanted to revisit the first piece, how they made the second piece, and what that experience showed them about their own kind of thinking. Um, also, just a side note, they did a great job photographing this work. Um, it's really great to see the different angles of the piece before and after. So just think about how photography can help tell your story with the Parsons Challenge. Um, I hope that helps in, in kind of our unpacking that a little bit more clearly um, for you uh, as well. Also, um, Worth noting, thank you Akshaya for asking about how the portfolio is submitted. We are putting that online at the end of this month. It will be a new method, it will be online. Um, so digital portfolios is how we um, receive your work and we will explain that in much more detail at the end of the month. So great question. Over to you, Tina. Um, do you want me to pull that information up about scholarships? 
Sure, let's let's shuffle some decks. Um, so yeah, so I just sent a link. That's a link for external scholarship, but I'm gonna start talking about the Merit Aid Award. That's the that's um award that will be automatically uh, kind of considered as you apply to the new school, regardless your major. Um, so that Merit Aid, it's not like a loan. You don't have to pay it back. Uh, it's we offer you according to the strength of your application. And that's why it's important when all three of us are talking about uh, each individual majors and program, what we look into you. And that's where uh, you want to put the most effort into preparing the application. Uh, because we look into every aspect of who you are as an artist, as a human, as a musician, as a visual art artist. Uh, and that will provide you the most benefit into be considered higher uh, merit aid scholarship. And I do want to mention that um, more than 50, 85 of our students, admitted students are, rece are receiving merit aid scholarship. And we do also have more than 2000 student work study grant that's offered to the students. Uh, in addition to that, I just, the link I shared you could be uh, a d external scholarship and that you may be looking into. Um, I don't think, as a, I was an international student myself, and so I don't think that uh, as a international students we're considered for the FAFSA because that's only offered to a U.S. citizen or permanent residents. Um, oh, yes, as for tuition, so our tuition is uh, roughly about 50, 50 to 52,000 a year. Um, so yes, yeah, as, as Lauren showed right here, Parson Paris scholarship is based on the European model, so it's a little bit different. And the housing is different, it's a kind of addition to the tuition. So housing in New York City uh, campuses roughly from 18,000 to 21,000. And um, I think earlier I shared a link to the current tuition, just to be mindful that the tuition right now you see online is uh, for this particular semester. So it will be updated for the next school year. Thanks, right. Tina. Um, there's a follow-up question uh, from uh, Shrishti about scholarships and renewability. So how does merit scholarship work for a student? Let's say they receive a merit scholarship when they're admitted. Um, is that just for one semester, just for one year? How does that work? Forever and ever! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish that true. Uh, so your scholarship will be renewed from year to year. Um, as long as you're uh, making a good academic standing, um, you guys can correct me. I think it's 3.0, is it correct? As long as you are, have a, a, a Ideally, yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, when students are on campus, um, if they're in good academic standing, at least for Parsons, that's actually 2.0, um, but it might be a little bit different for um, to cool. each college mm -hmm. at the new school. That's a great question, though. Yeah, thank you for that one. Um, hey, Lauren. It, yeah. Um, I think Renquan uh, is curious about what you would suggest for a student interested in jewelry design. Ooh, yes, yes, let's talk about that. Um, fun fact, I used to be a jewelry designer, so uh, this is a little bit of my area. <laughs> That's but, why your look is always so on point. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, you know, we were talking earlier about um, different ways to, you know, pursue art and design at Parsons. And I'm actually going to jump back to the majors that we have because I think it's just a good reminder to see you've got a lot of options. Um, with jewelry, we, of course, encourage students to explore this, um, regardless of your major, if this is a passion. Um, we have a lot of elective courses that you can take um, throughout your time at Parsons, and we leave space in the curriculum to allow for elective work um, as freshmen all the way through senior year. Um, but let's say you know from the outset, this is definitely something you want to pursue in depth. Um, you have basically three options um, to do that at the new school. So the first is fashion design. Students at fashion design can focus on collections, um, can focus on fashion product, AKA shoes, jewelry, um, hats, uh, specific um, bags, apparel, you know, that is just a one-off. Um, glasses, we actually had a recent graduate who pursued 
um, jewelry and glasses as one unit in these beautiful sculptures that were um, ornamental, uh, rigid, basically uh, glasses, jewelry hybrids. Um, so you can really go in an interesting direction with fashion design, um, BFA. Your second option is product design. And there's a similar you know, focus on the individual object and really crafting it in a beautiful way that is innovative and very hands-on. But the difference is product designers do a lot of research and um, audience engagement. And there's a totally different approach where you're actually kind of responding to a brief or you're responding to a client or a need and kind of using that as your impetus for this idea. So it's a different way of working, but you can still hone in on jewelry in that space. And the last option is our most flexible. It's called integrated design. And this major is basically a do-it-yourself. So it allows you to merge different design disciplines, pursue um, a curriculum that you've designed, and ultimately, you'll be educated as a sustainable maker, an entrepreneur in a community of like-minded individuals on very specific paths to their own businesses. As a result of this program, a lot of students launch a, a, a new business, a new endeavor. Um, the thesis projects are really fascinating. I do encourage you to look at integrated design um, as a third viable option um, and definitely a great question um, and nice to go back into jewelry. So I, I love a, a moment to reflect on that. So thank you, Ronquan, for asking that one. Sonia just, uh, just asked a great question too. Um, We'll be dropping our uh, email addresses into the chat. We'll also put the slide up, but um, you can email any of us uh, directly or to our offices. We're all here to help you with any of these questions that might arise as you dive in and start seeing what specifically you need to work on for your specific application. Um, the Parsons email is thinkparsons at newschool.edu. The performing arts email is performingarts at newschool.edu. Nice and easy. Um, and we're, uh, we're all here and happy to help. Those email addresses may make it seem like there's some big faceless team um, and you're dropping your email into the void, but both of those emails are handled by our small team teams of admission counselors and, and directors. Um, so you can be assured that that's the best way to reach us as quickly as possible. And again, we are thrilled to, to be able to walk you through this complicated process. You do not have to remember everything that we are telling you today. So I do wanna go back to a question that Poonam had asked earlier about um, Eugene Lang College and you know, the linkages of urban studies and political science um, before we wrap. Um, so our third and equally fascinating college at the New School is the College of Liberal Arts. Um, Eugene Lang is a really dynamic space where students are deep thinkers, passionate writers, debaters, um, are so engaged in social justice. And there's just a real spirit of collaboration in that community. Um, so Eugene Lang is a great space to dive into liberal arts subjects. Um, students have two years to explore and define their major. So what you select on your application is not a binding decision. It is just a starting off point. It really helps you um, to you know, say where you think you might begin. And um, we allow you to work with an advisor for two years to explore, see where that takes you, um, you know, find new ways to examine and grow um, your writing, your research skills. Um, we have shared learning objectives across the curriculum in really engaging classes that change each, each semester to um, address current subjects. We have, you know, themes on uh, Trump as history, examining political science and current um, social studies uh, with a very specific contemporary lens. We have larger themes of dystopian literature, um, examining sci-fi um, from a really fun perspective. I'm a sci-fi geek, so that speaks to me on a deep level. Um, and a lot of variations um, in between. One of the best ways to get a sense of how we 
um, encourage students to really customize their degrees, I would encourage you to look at the course uh, catalog this year. So I'm going to put that in the chat as well. Um, but related to urban studies and political science, um, urban studies is, as the name suggests, a way for you to um, work individually and in teams to really analyze the impact of our civic infrastructure, um, how policy and urban development has changed over time, um, using New York City as a great case study, um, but of course, examining more broadly and globally um, different possibilities that exist therein. Um, related to, you know, merging in political science, there's so much overlap there. Policy determines what design can do, determines how communities form. Um, community centers that are designed with, in, you know, community input are so much more dynamic um, in many ways than ones that are are airdropped in um, from from a local legislator. So it's it's fascinating to see that interconnection. And you absolutely could do that at Eugene Lang um, in your first two years and even beyond that. Um, you could have a major and a minor, you could have a major and two minors, or just simply take classes as they merge with your own areas of interest. So really great question, Bunam. You've all been asking really great questions today. This has been really cool. Um, oh, there's a new one. Uh, ah, um, it's a great question, a question for the moment that we're all in. Um, will the uh, unforeseen uh, number of deferred students from this year affect the admission decisions of next year? Um, there is two answers to this question. The first is simply, we don't know what next year is going to look like. We have every hope and every intention of returning to some semblance of normal functionality as a university. That means uh, in-person instruction, that means full enrollment numbers, and all of those things, right? Um, so uh, in a lot of ways, the answer to your question is absolutely not. Um, we are interested in uh, bringing in uh, all of our students that we can accommodate um, into our programs at Parsons, into our programs at Manus and Drama and Jazz um, and at Lang. Um, the downtick in enrollment due to the COVID-19 crisis currently affecting the entire globe um, has made it so that several students have deferred to the spring semester and to the fall semester of 2021, um, but not in such numbers that they will significantly affect any kind of selectivity um, for the programs. We are in a really great place as a university that we are able to contract and expand a little bit to accommodate as many students who are willing and um, uh, able to, to join us as possible, and uh, the pandemic has allowed us to do that uh, to an even greater degree. Um, so I can assure you that uh, um, perhaps with the um, exception of fashion design, just because that is the most tightly selective program at the new school, um, your specific interest in, uh, what you are specifically interested in at the new school will not be adversely affected in terms of selectivity because of deferment. Um, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that that is an even playing field for our applicants, the same as every other year we've um, allowed students to apply. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share precaution measures. Um, so in a lot of ways, again, uh, we are fortunate, um, you know, with a big asterisk next to that because we're all in this terrible pandemic and, and everything is, is sort of what it is. Um, New York City being the densely populated urban area um, that it is, uh, the new school um, was able to uh, pivot to virtual learning uh, at, at an early time and remain there where many of our competitors, many, many of our peer institutions um, were, uh, sort of hoping that they would be able to bring students back to campus and you're seeing now many American uh, colleges and universities having to walk that back and and say actually we have to go virtual uh, because they've unfortunately caused students to get sick. Um, the new school has not done that. The new school has been virtual. The new school pivoted in the spring semester to virtual learning and then spent the summer at every level of the university um, totally restructuring our university for virtual delivery. So we are not merely translating in-person instruction into a virtual environment. We have actually taken virtual learning as the premise for how we instruct our students in all of these different areas of interest because this virtual, this way of being virtual is going to be with us as artists, as scholars, as humans long after the pandemic subsides. So we've decided to take this as an opportunity to see how training 
um, our students as artists, as designers, as thinkers um, with this in mind um, will actually inform them even better as uh, professionals and entrepreneurs moving forward. So um, one precaution is just being virtual, right? Not bringing students back to campus with the exception of a very small number of graduating students who need to use studios um, and rehearsal spaces and recording studios for projects so they can graduate. Um, and we're doing that in very, very, very measured um, amounts. Um, students are booking spaces online and being escorted to and from doors um, by security. Uh, we're really tightly monitoring those students as they're on campus. Uh, we've also allowed some students back onto campus in the dorms at about 35% uh, capacity, um, somewhere around there. Um, and we've taken precautions in those instances as well, where students each have their own room. Um, there's uh, rigorous uh, cleaning and disinfecting going on um, and monitoring and contact tracing as well. Um, in the greater sort of context of New York City at the moment, New York City's looking really great. Um, our numbers are really low. Um, certain expected spikes in, uh, in cases have not happened. Um, we are moving into September when a lot of the public schools are going to be returning uh, in some fashion to learning. We, have, we do have several students who, despite the virtual learning for the fall semester, are moving to New York City from elsewhere. Um, we will also have several uh, uh, thousands of people who fled the city uh, in April who will be returning possibly for the fall. Um, all of these things may change uh, how New York is handling the virus, but um, New York has been um, kind of the model for America. Um, whether other places in America are taking cues from that model is a different question. I um, mean, that's all been sort of hard for all of us, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, to put it, uh, put a fine point on it, the, the new school as part of the New York City sort of um, uh, response to the pandemic has been really rigorous, really thorough, um, and for the most part, so far, very successful. Um, our only uh, sort of hardship at the moment um, is the financial downturn caused by the fact that many students are just not, um, not interested in virtual learning. Um, you know, the vast majority of our students are actually coming uh, to camp, uh, not coming to campus, but coming to classes. They, they, they decided to opt into this experiment with us. Um, you know, the, the deferral numbers are not what you might assume they'd be, um, but they are certainly affecting us. But other than that, we've been fortunate not to have um, really any significant um, COVID related issues in our staff, in our faculty, in our administration um, as of yet. And I'm knocking on wood at the moment, but yeah, so we're, we're doing everything we can and we will continue to monitor the situation as it develops. Yeah, thank you so much, Radhika, for asking that really important and timely question. Um, and I saw that, you know, some of you were also curious to know when can you come visit? And we are so excited to reopen when we can. Um, you know, when, you know, the guidance from the CDC says this is a wise and informed decision, when the governor of New York State says absolutely feel free um, to reopen universities, as soon as that happens, we are prepared to be back here on campus in New York City. Um, as some of you may know, each state um, does address things slightly differently. Um, so as you're you know, exploring and getting to know studying abroad here in the US, we do encourage you to read about each governor's response to the pandemic um, because each state uh, so the United States, each state is basically a separate country in a sense. Um, a lot of the um, guidelines and policies around reopening, around health and safety are determined by the governor of each state. So definitely take a look at how each state is responding. We've been really lucky, as Sam said, that our governor is so thoughtful and really um, taking great care of setting up standards that um, have been well respected in across New York, um, where we're located here in the US. So it's just a good reminder as you're becoming familiar with studying um, abroad, it is helpful to put that experience of the college or university you're looking at in the context of the state in which we are located in. Um, so awesome seeing all of you here today. Really appreciate all of these fantastic questions. Um, I saw that my colleagues had put their emails in there, so I added mine. Um, and um, we would be happy to keep in touch as we move forward. 
Um, if you are hungry to visit us, we are doing virtual visits. Um, there's lots of great programs that we're doing online from student panels to um, online info sessions about you know, all of the different facets of our dynamic university um, to essay writing. We're going to really go into it. Um, lots of um, hands on opportunities to share your portfolio. So many different ways to interact in um, the months ahead. And we do hope that we'll be able to keep in touch with you um, during this time. So Kunal, thank you so much for having us today. This has been awesome. Thank you so much, thank Lauren. You. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sam. And thank you so much, uh, Dina. Really appreciate all your kind time. As uh, we've been in touch over uh, the past many months, I could already tell the session was going to go well because of the overwhelming response we received when our outreach campaign had gone to the counselors. So thank you so much, counselors, uh, for really helping us put uh, this session together for your students, for the I'm sure there were uh, many questions your 12th graders are having as uh, we've seen in the uh, Q&A and chat box. Uh, parents, thank you so much for asking many of these questions and participating as well. Uh, truly appreciate your kind time. And uh, counselors, I have an important message. I know all school, school students were not able to attend this evening. Uh, because I'm sure they must be having other scheduling things, uh, constraints. But uh, we'll be sharing the recording of the session with your school in the next 24 hours. Uh, please do share it with all your other students so other students can uh, listen in on this session. And of course, be in touch with our three wonderful panelists for the day, which is Miss Lauren, uh, Mr. Samuel, and Miss Tina. So I would like to say a little hip hip hooray for you three. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Um, we know it's really in the more early in the morning, so we really appreciate your kind time and support and sincerely look forward to keeping in touch. And I'm sure many of these conversations will continue well after this workshop session has ended uh, between, of course, the wonderful panelists and the school counselors and their students. So I really appreciate everyone's time overall. Thank you. Please take care. Have a wonderful day in the US and to all from India who are joining in. Have a wonderful evening. Please take care. Stay safe until next time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.